Hi everyone, and welcome to KubeCon Cloud NativeCon. This is Cheryl Hung, and I'm very excited to be joining you here from my kitchen. But there's somebody who should be here, and who isn't, and that's Dan Cohn, my previous manager, one of the founders and executive director of the CNCF. When I recorded my keynote a few weeks ago, none of us knew that he was going to leave us so soon. So I wanted to share memory with you first. And that's the very first time that I spoke to Dan while I was interviewing for CNCF. So I'd prepared by, you know, talking about, I, I knew in my head what I was going to say about my experience, why I would be good for this role. And Dan, he, when he picked up the phone to me, the first thing he said to me was, Cheryl, after CNCF, you could become the executive director of your own foundation or you could start a startup, or you could become a VC, or you could join one of our member companies. And I was so surprised because I was like, aren't I supposed to be proving to you why I'm good enough to do this job? Why are you talking about what should happen after I do CNCF? But that's how he thought about people and that's how he thought about the community. It was never about, are you good enough to do it today? It was always about, how can I set you up so that in the future you'll be even better and you'll have even more opportunities to do what you want to do? For that, I'm very grateful and I know many of you who knew Dan are also very grateful. And in the spirit of that, I'm going to spend the rest of my keynote talking about the training and certification and education, upskilling yourself and your teams. But I just wanted to say thank you, Dan. We all miss you. Hello everyone and welcome to KubeCon Cloud NativeCon. I'm Cheryl and I've got two really exciting announcements from CNCF certification. One is a new certified Kubernetes security specialist and the second is new training benefits for end user companies. All KubeCon attendees get a discount on certifications. So I wanted to help you understand whether you should spend your time getting certified. Let's talk about three questions. Who should take certifications? What do they cover? And is it really a fair test of your skills? First, who should take certifications? Certifications are good for many different audiences. According to the 2020 Open Source Jobs Report from the Linux Foundation, DevOps is the most sought after job role, with 65% of companies looking to hire more DevOps talent. And the average salary for a Kubernetes job in the US is $148,000. With COVID-19, everyone has way more time at home than normal. And we have seen incredible growth, incredible demand for training and certification. 68% of professionals told us that they plan to take a certification this year, which is up significantly from 47% in 2018. For hiring managers, obviously a certification is not the same as real world experience. I definitely know this because when I was a DevOps manager back in 2017, it was just basically impossible to find anyone with experience running Kubernetes in production. So during interviews, I would you know, look for a cloud native mindset. Does this person think about releasing frequently? Do they think about monitoring their live systems? Do they think about automation? And I remember I had one really memorable answer to this. One candidate said, we build our software using containers and Jenkins. So I'm like, okay, all sounds pretty good so far. And then we burn our software to DVDs and we ship those DVDs out. And I just had this mind blown moment because wow, we have come a long way from shipping DVDs through the mail to what people expect nowadays from software. And a huge part of that is thanks to the many contributors who have put their time into cloud native projects. A third audience for certifications is end users, those who are adopting Kubernetes, and they want to establish a baseline of knowledge across existing teams. 74% of hiring managers 
were willing to pay for certifications, and one told me, we chose to pursue the CKA and CKAD training classes as a way to provide an educational foundation for a wide swathe of software and platform engineers who are relatively new to Kubernetes and its ecosystem. Kubernetes is our main infrastructure platform, and we wanted to set up a Kubernetes baseline of knowledge for SRE and application engineers. And we chose CKA and CKAD as a community validated approach. So, what a second question, what do the certifications cover? CKA stands for Certified Kubernetes Administrator and CKAD for Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. And we are so excited to launch the third in the series, that is the CKS or Certified Kubernetes Security Specialist. And it's gonna cover six topics, cluster setup, cluster hardening, system hardening, minimizing microservice vulnerabilities, supply chain security, monitoring, logging, and runtime security. But where did these six topics come from? So let me tell you, um, this is John Foreman. He is a senior technical architecture manager at Accenture. And over the last two years, he has seen a shift in client questions from what are containers to how do we secure containers? And to him, that disconnect was because current security tools were not container aware. So although teams were good at monitoring servers, operating systems, and network layers, the container clusters just consistently went unmonitored. So John and his team had been working on this container security reference model for DevSecOps engineers, which he wanted to share out with the rest of the community. So John and I, we had a coffee in KubeCon San Diego, and he asked whether CNCF would create a new security-focused certification which would be the gold standard for when companies hire talent or encourage their current staff to get certified. And I said, yeah, that sounds great because I've also seen the same growing demand for container security specialists. The open source jobs report agrees. After cloud technologies and Linux, security is the third highest priority knowledge area. But this certification has to be community driven because it has to reflect security practices across many different companies. So thanks to SIG Security, 20 security experts from vendors, consultancies, and end users volunteered to come together and they discuss the most important tasks that a security specialist would have to do. And that's where these six topics came from. And I want to say a huge thank you to John, his team, and our security experts for contributing your time and your expertise to the community. Because to answer the question of what do certifications cover, it's the community, duh. The community always decides what is most important. Last question, is this a fair test? And do you need real skills to pass it? Well, there's only one way to find out. I think I'm gonna go and try it myself. So let's go over to a laptop. All right, so the first thing that I see here is that it's not q and I actually have a live cluster and a live terminal that I can type into. So I'm told that I need to set the configuration context before I start. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste that. Looks like I can switch to the Kubernetes context. And I am given a task here. So my task is to find the pods running on any nodes having a memory limit configured and write the name of the pod with the highest memory limit configured to this file slash op slash whatever, whatever. So my first task, I'm going to look at the cluster and look at the nodes with kubectl get nodes. Looks like this is a three node cluster. I have Kubernetes master zero, Kubernetes node zero and Kubernetes node one. The next step for me, I think, is to look for the pods that are running on each node. I'm actually going to pause here and ask, what would you do? And we'll come back to this solution at the end. So to me, I actually do feel like this is a fair test because you have to be comfortable with a command line, with kubectl and other tools that a sysadmin would typically use. Over 15,000 people who have already completed the CKA or CKAD, and most people agree, it's pretty hard. 
One said, we think certification is really valuable and our engineers found the training and exam approach fair and practical as it's performance-based, not theoretical. So to sum up, is it worth getting a certification? I think this company said it best. No training is perfect. It's not going to make an engineer an expert after one week of training. But the hands-on exercises help build muscle memory, which engineers can leverage in their day-to-day -day responsibilities. And we want to encourage more people to get certified. So all KubeCon attendees get 50% off if you register this week, making it $150 instead of $300. And I'm personally really excited to announce new training benefits for end users. If your company is currently adopting Kubernetes and you plan to certify a whole team, you should join CNCF as an end user member because you're going to get an unlimited training subscription for 15 users plus 15 exam vouchers for a value of up to $15,000. Or you could join as an end user supporter and get five training courses or certifications for a value of up to $2,500. So if you're currently adopting Kubernetes and you want to improve the training and education options for your team, go to cncf.io slash join. Last but not least, the solution. I didn't forget. So let's go back to the laptop. All right, so here we go again. Remember my task was to find the pods on any nodes with the highest memory limit and write the name of the pod to this file. So I already know this is a three node cluster. So I'm going to do kubectl describe node and look at what is running on each of these nodes. So it looks like the first one is core DNS, etcd, and a bunch of cube, cube uh, containers. And the one with the highest memory limit is the core DNS pods with 170. I'm going to do the same again for the Kubernetes node 0. Do I see anything with more than 170? No. OK, let's try the third, third one. And same again. I don't see anything higher than 170. So if I remember correctly, this is actually a tie. There are two pods which both have 170, a memory limit of 170. Let me take these and I'm going to echo these into the, the file that I was told to. So it looks like I've got one and then the second one. And just to confirm that I actually did do it, let me use cats to check this file. And yeah, all looks good. Did you get it right? If you got it right, then well done. Happy certifying and have a fantastic cube call.